Hey guys, welcome back. If you caught our last video, you would have seen that we just recently landed in the city of Prague. We actually thought that rather than giving you the traditional tour of a new city, that it would actually be a lot of fun if we ate our way around Prague. So we have no real qualifications, but we like food, so we thought we'd share food with you. Two scoops, sir? Two, make it three. I'm not driving. So we've done a little bit of research, both online and through crowdsourcing on Instagram, and you guys came up with some great recommendations. So we thought that there would be no better way to celebrate our first evening here in Prague than with a traditional Czech dinner. So there are three qualifications that make a good restaurant for us. Number one, good food. Number two, good beer. Number three, a good location. Honestly, you can't really beat the location of this particular restaurant. You see, after a long day of traveling with a little kid, we weren't exactly up for hiking around the city in the evening hours. So to our surprise, one of the highest rated restaurants in all of the city of Prague is literally right across the street from our hotel. Here. Restaurant's right there. And I don't know about you, but this travel day too, we kind of skipped lunch. So I'm ready for a good hearty Czech meal. Let's go check it out. Okay, so I will apologize in advance. I don't speak Czech, but I will do my best. Our first stop is here to a local restaurant and brewery called Bradovsky Dvor. And what they're particularly known for is their amazing presentation of local beers. In fact, their tap goes directly into the barrels through only a three meter long faucet. The beer never touches the air, so it's very fresh. I went for a local dark Czech beer called Kozel that was highly recommended by our waiter and Jonathan went for the name brand beer from this restaurant, which is a local Pilsner. It's very good, and honestly for a dark beer, it's not heavy at all. It's light and really almost kind of sweet. Very good. That's really good. It tastes really fresh, kind of like when you do a brewery tour and they give you some samples. This is it. So we meant it when we said that we were here to try traditional Czech food. So the first two things that we plan on knocking off our list are a couple of appetizers. The first is commonly referred to as a pickled cheese, but really the Cambert cheese isn't exactly pickled, it's more marinated. And that's because in the Czech language, from what we've been told, the word for pickling and marinating is actually the same word, so often it gets misinterpreted. What they do to the cheese is they infuse it with different peppers and spices and then marinate it in an oil to really infuse in all that flavor. It's creamy. And the fragrance that comes up off of this cheese with the different spices and the peppers, it's divine. The second thing we ordered is a bit adventurous for my palate at least, but Jonathan insisted that he had to try it, and it's beef tartare. Apparently it is a super popular appetizer here in the Czech Republic, and I think I might actually have to give it a try too. So I've never eaten this before, but it looks like a cheeseburger before it goes on the grill. It feels like I'm eating a raw cheeseburger, but it tastes really good. Like, it, it tastes... Oh, that's delicious. I promised I might give this a try, so here we go. Here's the thing, I think honestly, if somebody had blindfolded me and just given me a bite of this without me actually knowing what it was, I'd say it's delicious. I think it's just really difficult getting over this idea that I'm eating raw beef. But I mean, flavor-wise, actually surprisingly really good. Who would have knew? raw beef and pickled cheese for a really tasty Czech appetizer. So now that I've eaten half of this thing of raw beef, I've, I was told I'm doing this wrong. So what you need to do is take the garlic, put the garlic on the bread, take your raw beef patty that normally goes on the grill, oh now you have the taste of garlic in it too. Oh this is even better than it was before. That is how you do it correctly. For our main course, 
course tonight, what the waiter suggested that we try is a local dish called Svitskola. Effectively, it's a beef sirloin with a sauce over top alongside two bread dumplings, topped off with a sweet cream sauce. Cheers! First off, delicious. And I'm not quite sure if it's the cranberries, maybe that's what's doing it for me, but it almost reminds me of like Thanksgiving dinner, completely delicious. Highly recommend that you give this a try. Hey, good morning. So we had a little bit of a late start to the day. As you can imagine, after a travel day, we were a little bit tired. But we actually thought that this Saturday morning would be a great time to try something maybe a little bit more unconventional. Rather than heading out to a local restaurant for a brunch spot, we're here at one of the local farmer's markets in Prague. Now, there are a number of farmer's markets in the various districts of the city. However, the one here that's right along the banks of the Voltava River is by far the most popular. So we're gonna go head in, check it out, and try to find some yummy treats to eat from some of the local vendors. Hi, thank you. Okay, so we were slightly mistaken happens of course when there's a little bit of a language barrier but apparently brownie is the popular flavor at coffee coffee to be put in their coffee drinks so both of us opted to have that flavor put in because we'd seen a couple of different vendors around the farmers market selling brownies um, I went with a frappe and I went with an iced coffee normally if there's a long line it's a good indication that it's probably really good that's delicious very, very good. And cinnamon, but for me it's uh, the best uh, poppy seeds. That sounds it's great. It's very good. Yeah, just one If piece. you like it. <laughs> Thank you. So we stopped here at this delicious looking stand and picked up this pastry that has like a flaky crust and then on the inside is poppy seed and cinnamon. Um, and this is what she recommended that we try and it was her favorite. So, you know what, I'll give it a shot. A little bit sweet, but not too sweet. I think we're gonna be full all the way till dinner by the time we both chair and finish this guy. Not pretty good though, I've never had anything like this. On this food tour project, I'd like to share with you his culinary delights, this fruit pouch. Yummy. Okay, so we're here at a local delicatessen that came highly recommended, and we picked out two types of open face sandwiches. The first, a crab spread, and the second is a more traditional roast beef option. So, let's give them a try. So first off, it's delicious, and I think what separates this from the cinchetti that we had when we were in Italy is that the bread is actually really soft white bread. Delicious. All right, I'm That's delicious. By the way, this entire lunch, including two beers, only cost us 250 krona, roughly around 10 euros. What a deal, and it tastes amazing. Oh my god, more stairs. We have flashbacks to Meersburg. And John's Land. I'm sweating just thinking about it. We 
who realized after the fact that there's a road where he wouldn't need to carry the stroller all the way down the steps. <laughs> Sorry, Jonathan. Okay, so it goes without saying that anytime that you visit a new city, you should definitely check out the local tourism board for recommendations on what's going on in the city. And the city planners of Prague must have known that we were coming because today there's a wine festival going on in the city of Prague. So this actually works out well for us because one of the things that we were told to do is to come here and have the Czech wine, where it's actually called Moravian wine, and that's because it's made in that region of the Czech Republic. About 90 to 95% of all of the wine produced in the Czech Republic comes from this particular province. And I have to say, very tasty. So as I mentioned before, the beer here is hugely popular and you might wonder why there's so much foam. Normally the beers here are filled one third with foam and that is the correct way to pour a beer. So, cheers! Pretty sweet. It's not like a normal dark beer. It's delicious though. So I went for the big one. I was told to get a pork knuckle while I'm here and it's the size of I think two of my stomachs. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to eat this, but I will give it a shot. Really, really tender. Oh my goodness. So I went with a traditional Czech goulash. Now with this particular goulash, you also get two pieces of bread dumplings and two pieces of speck dumplings, which I guess from German speck must mean bacon. Mm, savory, like eating a homemade roast. Try a speck dumpling. So, so good. It's delicious. Like Friday and yesterday, Sunday is another hot day here in Prague. And there's no better place to beat the heat than up here at this beer garden overlooking the city. Not only do you get some good brews to drink, but also spectacular views of the cityscape. It's a must stop if you're here visiting Prague. And since we are trying to make a food vlog, I thought it would be important to talk a little bit about prices. Um, this is one of the things I loved about Prague last time I was here is how affordable it is. Um, but to put it some reference here, the beers are only about two to three euros each for a big beer. And the entrees are usually around 10 euros or less. Really pretty inexpensive for some delicious food. So we also thought this would be a good time for us to stop and kind of reflect back on the past two days here in Prague and give you our general impressions of the city. From everything I've seen so far, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous city. When I was told that there was great architecture in Prague, it's it really cannot be overstated how beautiful the architecture really is. One of the unique things that struck us in Prague is how terrifying the trams are. It's like watching an episode of Speed. <laughs> if they slow down, they're probably going to explode. The bomb on a bus. Once the bus goes 50 miles an hour, the bomb is armed. If it drops below 50, it blows up. So today is Sunday and it's our last full day here in Prague. And honestly, I think we probably could have stayed for a whole nother day just to continue exploring the city. Yeah, you know, we reviewed about every single restaurant in Prague before we came here and there are a lot more that we wish we could have visited. And it's worth noting that if you're somebody who really enjoys fine cuisine, there are a number of Michelin-starred restaurants here in the city of Prague at non-typical Michelin star prices. And last but not least, as with all of our videos, we've written an entire blog post about the topic of today's video. So what that means for you is that if you check out the link down below in the description, you can get information about all of the restaurants that we visited while we're here in Prague, along with Google links on how to find them, prices, and yummy pictures of all the foods that we've taste tested along the way. He is a big fan of the food. So we stopped 
here just off of the main city square to get a couple of local favorites. The first is an item called Lagos, which is basically a fried piece of dough that we've opted to be topped off with goat cheese, rucola, and what looks like beets. We've also gotten some local sausage that looks outstanding. I was not living in Germany, I was already in the land of sausages, but these red sausages are really, really popular here. Really good, a little spicy. Kind of like a chorizo, but a lot bigger. Not anything like what we eat in Germany. So although we just finished eating a delicious savory lunch, I think we have a little bit of room left still for a sweet treat. And if there's one thing that we know for sure, it's that chimney cakes should definitely be on our menu for today. Yeah, we've seen chimney cakes literally on every single street corner. And from the smell of simmering sugar that is wafting through the air right now, I think we're getting close. I think so. So no trip to Prague would be complete without getting a chimney cake. How they make it is they take a piece of dough wrapped around a wooden spit, which is then fired over warm coals. They'll roll it in a mixture of sugar, sometimes cinnamon and walnuts, and in our case, topped with ice cream and chocolate. So for some of our American friends, it's basically a different version of a funnel cake. What's not to love? It looks delicious. Quite sure of the etiquette, because it's, you know, it's pretty tough. I guess I just have to bite it. This is, apologies in advance, because I don't think this is going to be particularly graceful. Is this a good look? It tastes delicious. We highly recommend getting hot chocolate on the inside as well. It's basically at this point just hot fudge. I regret nothing. This was a very good one. So we are nearly stuffed from this food tour of Prague, but for scientific purposes, of course. Naturally. At the beginning of this video, we wanted to stress that we didn't want to have the typical food tour of Prague, where the only thing that we would eat while we were here in town was just traditional Czech fare. And don't get me wrong, it's been delicious. But tonight, for our last night in the city, we wanted to do something a little extra special. Yeah, when I was doing all the research for restaurants in Prague, I noticed there were a lot of Vietnamese restaurants and Asian restaurants. and. From the research I've done, the, the food is supposed to be excellent. Yeah, in fact, 30,000 people who live in the city of Prague identify themselves as Vietnamese. So naturally, not only is there an abundance of Vietnamese restaurants, but they're also really good. And I think something light, fresh, and a little bit different from the fare that we've experienced thus far sounds pretty perfect. tonight we're keeping it nice and light and bright with a summer roll and a refreshing mojito. Sounds perfect after a hot day of traveling the city. So mojitos are one of my favorite supper cocktails. We'll see how this one stacks up. Oh, it's delicious. Don't get me wrong, the food that we've had this far has been amazing, but there's just something nice and light and refreshing to have about fresh Vietnamese food. And I have to say, this is some of the best I've had. So one of the reasons we really wanted to come here is both of us really like Asian food. I've lived in Taiwan for five months and I usually travel to China and Taiwan probably six weeks out of the year. Um, so I've had a little bit of everything. So basically Bun Yan is duck blossom that's served with rice noodles, pickled bamboo, chili pak choy, and strong duck ginger broth. This tastes a little bit different than the traditional dishes I've had, but this is right up my alley. It is fantastic. I am super excited about my main dish tonight. I went for one of their signature dishes called the walking duck. It comes along with rice noodles, iceberg lettuce, roasted peanuts, fried onion, soy sprouts, red bell pepper, and a gently spicy soy sauce. Oh, it's amazing. It's both warm and light at the same time exactly what I was hoping to eat tonight.
So we just finished our Vietnamese dinner to wrap up our culinary adventure in Prague. Actually, as we were checking out here tonight, we got to chat with the owner and his sister. They've been in the business for a couple of years, but unfortunately their original business closed after two years during the COVID pandemic when the owner sold off the building. They've actually only been at this location here for just three months. And if anything, we are totally just blown away by all of the support that this particular business has got. If you hop on Google reviews, you'll see that this location is one of the best rated Vietnamese restaurants in the entire city of Prague. And the fact that it's only been in business for three months, honestly, after eating dinner here tonight, I totally get why it's worth the hype. So it is always good to eat where the locals eat, and this is where that is. Yeah, I have to say, this was a perfect way to end out our culinary adventure in Prague, eating like a local citizen would. So, and with that, I think it's a great point to wrap up this video because we fly out tomorrow morning. And as always, if you liked what you watched today, we'd love it if you hit that thumbs up button. And for more content from the Black Forest family, hit that subscribe button. So, until next time, cheers. Bis bald.